today and taking the time out of your busy schedules to nurture your spirit. And I can just feel the energy in the room. People are so happy to be here. And I know how hard it is to take this time out of your lives. It's funny because one of the questions that Laura asked me at the book signing in Baltimore last year was, you know, you're touring the country, meeting a lot of women, and talking about your book. Because I just had put out my second book, Tranquilista, Mastering the Art of Enlightened Work and Mindful Play. And of course I'm meeting a lot of amazing women. And the main thing that comes up is that we're really busy, right? Like, duh. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's, that's the common thing. Like, think about it when you ask, hey, Sally, how are you? Oh, very busy. You know, it's just like our, our standard response. And so since I have created a, a whole kind of business, and I'll talk about it, around the idea of tranquility, I really want to speak to ways in which you can have a little more tranquility in your life. And how many of you would like a little more tranquility in your life? Yeah, right? Because you may be one of those who responds and says, I'm busy, not I'm fine, I'm happy, I'm joyful, life is grand. You know, it's I'm busy. And it's interesting. So I want to move into sharing my top five tips of tranquility. All right, so many of you raised your hand, interested in finding a little more tranquility in your life. And I wanted to share some of the ways in which I encourage women to do it, and I too have tried to find it over the years. And, you know, currently I am overseeing these four organizations, and I'm also, I decided to go back to school to get a master's in social work, so I'm halfway through that program. And one of the things I really want to emphasize with this idea around tranquility is do-gooding, giving back to others, making a difference. You know, one of the things Laura wrote in the write-up was leaving a legacy, and that's something that I think is one of the ways in which we can make sure we're leading a creative life and we're leaving a creative spark in everything we do. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as that's the fifth tip. But I'm going to start with number one, which is spirituality is a priority. So number one, spirituality is a priority. And when I say spirituality, this is totally up to interpretation. This does not necessarily mean religion, although it can for you. Spirituality is, if you think about like a pyramid, it's the foundation. It's the way in which we can start our day. And your spiritual connection could be with your cup of coffee first thing every morning. You know, your spiritual connection could be getting up and starting your day with prayer. So there's no right or wrong. Just the idea is to like how to make sure that we have a foundation that's really solid and in touch with our core. Number two is take action. So it's great if we have spirituality, but then what, right? So like then how do we make or activate change? So number one, spirituality is a priority, and number two, take action. So a few ideas on how to take action. So take a moment and think about where is your time and energy going? Some of you may be caretaking for other family members. You may be working a lot. How many of you work at the hospital that is putting on this event? Oh yeah, okay, so not as many of you as I expected. Because uh, hospital workers, I can only imagine how intense that is. And, you know, others, I know that there are many intense positions. And thinking about where time and energy goes, as I was researching, also was finding all the stress-related statistics from work. And, of course, it was always a lot higher for women because there's also the balance of family at home and the caretaking aspect there. But observing your time and energy, where's it going? And then the flip side, where do you wish it was going? Like, would you prefer to be focusing full-time on your craft business or baking pies or caretaking for your mother full-time? Like, what is it that you would prefer to be doing? And are there any small shifts that you can make to actually align the two so that your ideal relates a little bit better with your current? Number three, your life is art. 
Number three, your life is art. So clearly this is where creative flair comes in. Color outside the lines, like dare to be different. Indulge in an artist state. So I want to share some ideas for you what an artist state is. This is the idea that comes out of Julia Cameron's work, the book that I first mentioned, The Artist's Way. So an artist state, this is actually an artist state, although technically you're supposed to do it solo. Oftentimes I'll go to conferences or events like this and I'll go alone. And so to me it is an artist state even though I'm surrounded by a lot of other fabulous people. But the idea with it being alone is that women tend to get such little alone time, and so it's their chance to kind of refill the well. You've probably heard a lot about the notion of refill the well. You know, it's like the, the oxygen mask on an airplane. Before you put on another's, make sure yours is on. So making sure that you're constantly refueling your creative spirit, and that can be done. For me, of course, it's going to bookstores. Last night we were eating at one of my favorite restaurants, and I turned to my boyfriend and I said, you know what would really make this evening complete? And he's like, dear Lord, what? And I said, a bookstore. <laughs> okay. So, you know, it's the little things, right? But to me, that was like a mini artist date. Bookstores, art galleries. How many of you went to go see the four bitchin' babes? Is that what it was last night? Yeah. So, yay. So that's an artist day. You know, things like just kind of getting out of your everyday and your norm and going and actually nurturing your creative spirit. Number four is exude style. And style is not so much just in the way you wear, it's the way in which you communicate, the way in which you present yourself. So wear clothing that exudes your personality. Like why be a Talbot's girl if you're more a Betsy Johnson girl? Accessorized with flower pens, gemstones, cocktail rings, stilettos, pink tights, or Jackie O sunglasses. And of course, there's lots of fabulous finds around the room from the accessorizing perspective. Send thank you notes and snail mail thank you notes, might I add. Isn't that a dying art? And it's such a treat. Now I get thank you texts. And I appreciate the thank you text, but I really appreciate a thank you note. Particularly if it has something fun inserted, like a tea bag or you know, confetti is also fun. So sending thank you notes, I really feel like that's a dying art. To me, that's all about style. Getting a facial, huh? indulge in a bed day. And this is something I really want to encourage. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read a little bit about a bed day from my book and encourage you guys to have one of these fabulous things. And you know, it may be a bed hour because you may not actually be able to indulge in a, in a full-fledged bed day. But and then number five, so this is the finale on tranquil living. Leave a legacy. <coughs> Launch something to create a difference that makes a difference. So think about the person who first put on this conference. You know, they probably had no idea that they could get 240 women here at the 16th annual. But what they put together has made a big difference in many women's lives. And many of you are repeat people. There were only a few virgins that stood up and, and stated that this was your first time here. So it's amazing to see what someone's creative spark and inspiration has inspired throughout this room. Start a blog. It's a great way to get your voice out there, especially if you see yourself as a fledgling writer. So a blog is like an online journal, sharing your thoughts and your voice. Write a book. Produce a podcast. Design a dress. Be your brand. And when I mention brand, it's like your whole communication style. It's the way in which you present yourself at work, with your family. It's thinking of your personal brand. Send an inspiring note. Speak your mind. Any chance you're given the opportunity to get up and speak, do it. Number one, spirituality is a priority. Number two, take action. Number three, your life is art. Think of your life as this beautiful canvas, a masterpiece that you're painting upon every single day with the people you bring into the life and the decisions that you make. And you know what? You can always paint over it. Number four, exude style. And number five, leave a legacy.